How you doing there, Terrell? Oh man, look at that. Yeah, hey, I see you brought your uh yeah, it's a Sparky, it's my dog. He just loves the smell of gasoline. Yeah, he looks like he's tired. Boy. Yeah, I thought Sparky died. Uh, yeah, Sparky did die. I took him down to the taxidermist, had him stuff him up for me. <laughs> so you're riding around with a dead, stuffed dog. You want to keep him around, huh? Just like this old chainsaw yeah, here. I can't part with neither one, Terrell. And what's wrong with your chainsaw? Oh, it's just running erratically. I don't know, running crazy. You're going bap, 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 There's a problem yep, with the spark, and I know how to fix that for you. Boy, this is an old saw, 1979. Wow. 031. Is it really that old, huh? Yeah, it's old. All right, Terrell, I'll get out of your hair. I got to go take it down. Well, we got a bathroom here. Oh, that's all right. I don't like pooing in little bathrooms. Okay, I hope everything comes out all right. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Go home and make a poop face. All right, Terrell, I'll be talking at you. I'll call you when this saw's ready. The fella brought this saw in. It's got bad spark, intermittent spark. Now, a lot of times people have this saw and they'll think it's the carburetor or fuel problem. It's not that, it's, it's the spark. If you put that inline fuel spark tester that I showed you in one of my other videos, if you put this in line and run it, you'd see the spark breaking up, going in and out, in and out, in and out. There is a guy on YouTube that's got a video, it's called uh, 031, uh, still 031, part one, ignition problem, it's like 30 seconds long, if you can find that video, you'll, if your saw is doing that, it's spark. I, he never did make a part two, so just consider this part two. This one's for, uh, you can get these modules, they got these two different modules you can get with two prongs. One 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 prongs. This one's for a Kamasaki, but it'll work. Does the same thing. Eliminates the points condenser. Stens has them. Uh, Rotary has them. Oregon has them. You can find them on uh, on the uh, on the inner screen. Uh, you can do a giggle search and find these modules. They call it a, a universal spark module or ignition module. This one's called the Nova. If you want part numbers, the Stens part number is 440-465. They call it a Megafire. Rotary calls it a Nova. It's 8786. And Rotary's the only one that's going to have this for the Kamasaki. And that's 9334. And the Oregon one is like this. It's 33053. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, first thing is, people don't know how to get this cover off. They want to unscrew the gas tank and all this stuff and take all this off. You don't have to. I'm going to show you how to get this cover off. Take out this screw, this screw, this screw. Take out the two screws back here. And then on the other side, there's another screw right here. Take that screw out. And then take these other ones out, these three. And then you'll have to disconnect the kill wire and you'll have to pull the fuel line off. And then the whole cover come right off. I already disconnected the fuel line in the, in the kill wire ahead of time. And then you can get to the flywheel and we're gonna remove the flywheel and cut the wires and I'm gonna show you where to mount the module and all that and we're gonna have this thing Running hot, it's gonna have hot spark. Woo! Hot spark, and that thing's gonna cut through wood like a beaver. All right, you're gonna remove the flywheel nut, get it loose. Now you can see there's threads in there for a pulling tool, but most people don't have that pulling tool. So I'm gonna back the nut down even with the threads, you know, flush with the top of the shaft. And then use something soft. I got a brass rod, aluminum, because you don't want to bugger this up. And then take a little screwdriver, put a little pressure underneath here. And then I'm going to use my elbow to put pressure. And if you got another person, they can push on the screwdriver. And then you need a hammer. Let me get a hammer. And then just 
put some pressure on that screwdriver, and then give it a couple of good sharp blows. See, I didn't bugger up them threads because that nut's coming off. And there's your dinner. Now, you're going to take these wires off here. 732 nut. 732 socket works for that. Some kind of metric, but I don't have a socket. I know 732 works. One's a condenser, and the other two, one's a kill wire, and the other one's the one going to the coil. I'm going to take this condenser out of your way. You don't need this anymore. Now you got room to get these wires out. Now just go ahead and cut these wires because you're going to have to pull them through that hole. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut them. Now I can pull them through. This is the kill wire. This is the one going to the, to the coil. Now I'm going to tie them back together and then I'm going to hook it to the module. Now this is the tricky part. Can you zoom in on there? It's hiding this, this component. See, I got this mounted to the back side. So what I had to do is put a longer screw in there with a nut. Now it's metric. It's 5 millimeter, 0 .08 threads. So I took the original screw out that looked like that, and I found me a longer one. And then I put a nut on the back side and mounted that. It has to be mounted, grounded to the coil. That's the only place you can ground it. Now if you use this other module, if you use this one, see you got a negative one, that you're going to have to run a wire, a little short wire to ground. Mount it up underneath there and you may even have to drill that hole out a little bigger for the screw or if you got a five millimeter tap, there's a five millimeter. Zero point eight. Can you see that? Is that will that camera zoom in on that enough? No, can't see that? Okay. But you could thread that. See? I'm putting threads in there. And then you can put that up underneath there, put that screw in there and hold that up tight, but you still got to run a ground wire to ground. Or you can run the wire up around the top. But I prefer to use the Kawasaki module. Where'd it go? So many modules here. I prefer to use the Kawasaki module because it's only got one tab on it and it's self grounding so once you ground it up underneath there all you got to do is run your two wires your kill wire and your coil wire to that post all right now i just took the wire that came in the kit because it's got the right connector on the end and i just cut it off and stripped it back and i just used the butt connector you can connect it any way you feel proper and i just connected it all together and then all I got to do is hook it. I don't know if you can get in there. All I'm going to do is hook it to the tab on that module that I mounted back behind there. I'm just going to hook that on there. And then I'll put the flywheel on and put it all back together. And I'm going to show you how it's going to have hot spark. And this is all that's going to run a lot better. Okay, this coil here tested bad and I'm going to show you how tested with a continuity tester you remember these guys don't you hi Carol hi Carol we gonna do a test today yeah we gonna test something today Carol yeah boy you two boys are gonna be testing coil you're gonna be making your little noises you know that noise you make when you kiss hear that beep beep when they kiss they make that noise <laughs> Now I'm going to hook him up to this here coil. I'm going to show you how it's bad. Now you get on that side, Inky. And the other blinky you get on the uh, ground. Now see? 
Ain't no continuity. Now this is something you need to check on this coil, on these coils here. Now watch what happens. I'm going to show you why this thing is bad. Probably from vibration. See this wire? See, now it's making connection. This thing was giving me the flux. Because I had that all hooked up and had it sparking and everything and then put it all back together and then it died. Then it had no spark. And this is why. Probably from vibration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to crimp this here and see if that fixes it. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, Inky and Blinky, you're done. Okay, Tara, thanks, Tara. Put us away now, Tara. No, I'm going to keep you out for a minute now. I tried to repair that wire that was going from here to here. I tried crimping it, and that didn't seem to work. Uh, I think the wire was broke more down here where it goes in. So what I did to make the repair is I drilled a 564 hole this way. And then that's a screw from a throttle plate on a carburetor. And then I just made up this jumper wire. All right, you guys, wake up. Blinky, winky, and blinky. Oh, you going to do a test now, Terrell? Yeah. Test us, Taro. All right, kids. All right. This going on the ground. And here's the coil. See? Beep, 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 beep. Every time. So if you got one of these coils, test it and check that wire. Make sure that wire ain't broke because that could be a problem while you're getting that intermittent spark. That bam, 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 bam. This chainsaw came in, it had no spark, and it was probably because of that wire, but I'm going to do that electronic ignition conversion to it anyway because that's got stronger spark, and you ain't got to worry about points, condenser, and all that, and popping the flywheel. I'm going to put that module. So we're going to put that back together, and I'm going to show you how it's all tidied up and where I mount, where I mount these things, okay? All right, another place I found where you can mount this little module if you don't want to mount it underneath the coil, if you think that's just too tight of a spot, is you mount it right here. I've mounted them right here. But you got to run the ground wire back to the coil. If you just try to ground it to here, it, it ain't going to work. It'll work a little bit, but it's going to be intermittent. You got to ground it back to the coil. Whether you use this module with the two prongs or you use the other module I'm using with the one prong, you're going to have to run a ground wire back to the coil. And I'm going to put it all back together and we're going to run this saw. I'm going to cut some wood with it. There she is, all fixed up. Got one through that wood like a beaver. And there's your dinner.